Hello everybody, it's Glick Films, and today I'm going to be going over some of the uh, practical effects that I used in the rooftop assault video, a um, little behind the scenes by popular demand. So, let's get started here. Uh, so, when I make a brick film really, I don't like to do the same thing twice. Every time I make a new film, I want to do something different, whether that be new techniques uh, and effects, or just be trying out a new setting. Uh, for this one, we've kind of explored the setting before of like you know a modern conflict with the LPOP video a while back, but you know I like that setting a lot, so I'll probably be doing more of it in the future too. Uh, so one of the first shots I kind of want to talk about is in the intro scene when we see the insurgents handing out rifles. Uh, this kind of shot of just showing the hands and the arm movement, I'm starting to like a lot. I use this type of shot in the uh, in the recent cowboy video. Make sure you check that out. I like that one a lot. Didn't get a lot of views though. And the way I do this one is actually I just entirely separate the arm from the torso so it can move freely, and I just make sure that it's framed in camera so you wouldn't be able, so you can't uh, see the kind of edges of where the arm is and where it should be connecting to the torso because it's been removed. Uh, and this style of shot is definitely a lot influenced by Wes Anderson. Uh, he likes to do that the hand close-up shot a lot. So the next shot I'll go over is the one where our, our heroes here, the squad guys, are getting on top of the roof, and the one guy helps him boost the other one up. Uh, this idea, actually, I'll show, I'll throw in some, uh, some of the test footage. When I'm doing kind of a difficult movement like this, I'll definitely uh, do a few tests of it before. Stuff that's simple, like walking or just shooting. I don't bother doing test runs of that because I know it'll come out fine. But when I'm doing a new movement like this, I definitely want to kind of strip down the elements. So do it in a more basic set. Do it with characters, uh, you know, without all their equipment and gear on, just so I can get the movement uh, kind of fluid first. Uh, so at first, I actually wanted to do this guy climbing up a ladder. But I was having the issue with his helmet and the night vision kind of kept banging on the rungs of the ladder. And I couldn't really get it to come out good. In fact, I find that climbing a ladder in stop motion in LEGO is actually pretty difficult. Uh, if anyone has any good examples of it, uh, send them to me because I'm still trying to figure out a good way to do this myself. But I did some few tests and also when he gets on top of the roof, we see that same thing where it's just the hand and arm removed from the torso where his squad leader uh, pulls him up when he's on the ledge. So getting on to kind of some of the, the big effects that, that people like to talk about, which are the gun smoke and the laser. Now, if you follow me on any of my other things like Instagram or TikTok, you've seen these effects before. They're not actually new, but they're new to the YouTube channel. So for the smoke effect, uh, I actually just use a vape pen. I use one that doesn't have any nicotine, and when I'm uh, inhaling the vape, I'm not actually uh, bringing it down into my lungs. I'm just getting it in my mouth and then blowing it out so it's not harmful. So, yeah, when I, when I do these shots, so... If you look at the details, uh, so some guns are smokier than others. So, for example, the guns with suppressors have more smoke and less flash, while the unsuppressed guns have more flash and less smoke. Uh, so, you know, I'll just, uh, you know, take a hit from the vape pen, and for the first shot, when the gun goes off, I blow a lot of smoke, and then for the next one, there's some less smoke, and the next one, there's some less smoke. And depending on uh, how lazy I am, the smoke will dissipate between 6 and 3 frames, uh, going at 15 frames per second. So, and for the laser effect, it's pretty straightforward. I just use a laser. Uh, the laser I use for this is just when I got off eBay. It's a, you know, 5 milliwatt green laser that's uh, the most powerful one you're legally allowed to have as a civilian, although there are ways to get around it, of course. Uh, but I was kind of worried. I probably wouldn't recommend using one this powerful because it kind of, it washes out. And if you see the actual dot of the laser in reference to the minifigures, it's huge. It's like the size of the minifigures torso itself. But it's good that it's that powerful because it helps the beam show up, which is what I think really sells the shot. Uh, so uh, there's kind of two ways to get the beam sh to show up that well. It's one, to have a really dark set. And uh, the set I had was kind of a medium brightness, but to have it come out more, I go back to the vape pen and I, you know just take a little tiny hit. So there's just a very light amount of kind of ambient fog mist, and that really brings out the laser when you do that. Uh, and some of the other tests I've done on my Instagram and on my TikTok of the laser I had used, which is like a really weak cat laser, like a cat toy laser. And those are fine. They, they'll just get you the pointer. And that's good in some situations. Uh, if you know, if you just want the pointer and once again, kind of real life, realistically, you don't always see the beam. Uh, but you know, I just really wanted the beam for the shot. But the issue with this is, right, getting the, the laser beam itself to line up with, you know, the direction the minifigure is pointing the gun and having the laser not be in frame. So, uh, so there's two shots where you see the laser. One, it's kind of in this third person behind the guy shooting perspective, and the second one is from the front. The third person kind of behind the shot perspective was a lot easier because I just placed the minifigure on the left side of the frame, so the laser uh, module itself was just out of frame, and then it looked like the beam was coming uh, just on the side of the gun. On the front, it was 
a bit more difficult. I just kind of had to position it in a way where the minifigure itself is hiding the laser. And there's actually a few frames where you can see the laser module itself, but it doesn't really show up that well because it's a black background and the laser module itself is also black. So it kind of blends in. You don't really notice it unless uh, you're looking. So another little effect I did is with the tracers. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to work on this uh, in the future because I think I can get it to look a lot better but for the tracer shot from the dishka mounted on the technical uh, the tracers themselves are obviously just the red lightsaber pieces and to make them pop a little bit more I did shine that little red cat laser in them uh, kind of shining it through it so the clear plastic would kind of uh, refract that light inside of it so they glow just a little bit more than usual although they don't really glow that much and I'm looking into this, this one guy who does crazy visual effects I think he's called Brick Cinema uh, and he does he has crazy effects that he uses uh, for lasers and Star Wars stuff, but I'm definitely going to try to apply that tech, uh, technique to uh, just conventional tracers. And uh, another shot, so uh, a shot that's seen repeatedly is the drone kind of perspective. It's seen at the beginning, the middle, and the end. Uh, and the way I set that up is really janky. So for this film, I just recorded it on my phone. Some of my stuff is shot on a Canon 6 a T DSLR. I don't know much about cameras. It's my sister's. I'm borrowing it. But this one was just shot on my iPhone, and I kind of have my iPhone propped up in this, you know, very janky Lego, you know, brick-built stand. And what I did for this one, I said, okay, I need uh, to elevate the camera above the set, and I need to have a stable platform. So I said, okay, what's kind of tall and stable? So I ended up using a, an Amazon Alexa as the, the mount for this. I don't have any fancy tripods or, or any, you know, like pulley systems that people, you know, these crazy stop-motion guys have to set up these overhead shots. Uh, and for, throw back to my first brick film that's on this channel, uh, the escape button. I had an overhead shot, but it's not filmed overhead. It's actually filmed sideways. So I actually, you know, prop the entire setup vertically and then shot it head on. So I get I get the overhead shot. That's a good way to do things. That same technique is also seen in LPOP when uh when our guys uh he's belaying himself up that cliff side and it looks like you know he's going up the cliff but really that was shot flat on a plane and then i just rotated the image 90 degrees to make it look like he was going up but it wasn't actually shot like that so for the drone view i also wanted to get the thermal perspective and you know i like to do things practical but i didn't have a thermal camera to shoot for this so what i ended up doing is for the sets i would build the entire set like the background a dark color and then all the minifigures I would have being all white stuff. So that way when I went into the post-processing in my editor, which I use HitFilm Express, it's free. It's, you know, it's not great, but it's certainly very good for being free. I made it black and white, and then I made the whites really bright and the darks more, uh, you know, dim. So it looks like this white hot thermal view where we have the insurgents, uh, you know, glowing like it's in a thermal view. And then the issue that I ended up running into is when I wanted to do the shot of our heroes, uh, the squad, when they're on top of the roof sh uh, shooting down at the insurgents, and we get the thermal view of them. Well, the issue was all the gear I had for them, you know, it was mostly black gear, and also the building they were on was all uh, tan, which is more of a light color. So what I ended up doing is just flipping it, so instead of having that white hot thermal effect, it's the black hot thermal effect, and instead of the minifigures all being white, I replaced them with all black minifigures. And then when I went into post-processing, I boosted the blacks and kind of dimmed out the whites. So it's kind of the reverse thermal imaging and kind of in a storytelling narrative. It's cool because it gives you a contrast. You know, oh, the white hot, that's the bad guys and the black hot is the good guys. So when I'm doing uh, the gun smoke and the muzzle flashes, for this one, I decided to go with just the Lego piece muzzle flashes. Recently, I've been leaning more towards using paper muzzle flashes. I think they look pretty good, but I'm still, you know, messing. I still think the Lego ones look good. And whenever the gun goes off, I'll have a, a light flash on it as the muzzle flash. And that light I get comes from a headlamp that I use. And I like the headlamp a lot. One, because it's got a rechargeable battery. It lasts forever. Um, two, it's pretty cheap. And three, it has a lot of different uh, brightness settings. And lastly here, I'll talk about my sounds. Everyone wants to know where I get my sounds from. So this one, uh, this stop motion being based off of Insurgency, uh, I get most of my sounds, specifically the voice line, from the game Insurgency itself. Uh, you know, And most of my sounds, in fact, do come from video games. So that's kind of the behind the scenes of my rooftop assault video. If you like that, maybe I'll go do some more of these for some of my other videos. And I'm thinking of maybe doing some more uh, tutorial like videos, especially with stuff like the shooting effects, because that's the one thing I feel like I'm qualified to speak about. So if you like that, go ahead, drop a like, uh, hit the subscribe button. Just so you know, I got some big stuff on the way. So definitely stay tuned.